What's going on, guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Edmonton Oilers. And we're picking up where we left off here at the deadline after, uh, well, in the tail end of an abysmal season. 21, 34, and 7. So we're asking uh, what we should, you know, what route should we take to maybe um, improve the team for the future. Since there's a trade deadline, a trade right now, we won't really improve us in the standings too much unless we win out the rest of the season, but I don't think that's going to happen. And uh, most people on board with pursuing Taylor Hall and the pieces to give up for him, Clef Bomb, like I was thinking. There's one person who said they disagree and that I should trade uh, Dry Saddle. Now, the reason I don't want to do that quite yet is because, well, I kind of need him on the first line. That's kind of... <laughs> the main thing uh you know i'm thinking mcdavid dry saddle hall and that's our first line then our second line Toulouse, nuge uh neil pooley not ready yet i mean once he's ready you know i mean we have we have neil for a few more years we can move him on to the other side Toulouse on a one-year deal we ain't gonna need him next year so he's gone and then our top six is actually starting to look respectable then we can start we can kind of look towards free agency to improve the other areas so, like, well, to improve our bottom six, uh, you know, I kind of like Ryan White still. He's still decent defensively. Broads, well, he's going to be gone. Brodziak's 34. I think he's going to get worse. He's going to keep declining. So he's likely not going to be back, which kind of sucks because he has pretty damn good defensive stats. But we'll be able to find some guys. I think we're going to have to do a complete revamp of our bottom six in free agency this year or make trades as well. Uh, that's just how it's going to have to go. I mean, we just don't. Even like even the prospects that we have just aren't aren't good enough, and they're not going to really make it, as you can see, Hendricks. You know, none of these guys. So, yeah, it's we're, we're really going to need those defensive forwards for sh for sure. So, all right, well, we're going to have to bring up a defenseman once we make this trade, likely a lefty, um, which we don't really have. So we could just bring up Bear or something like that, have him. Have him play in the bottom six, see how he does, who knows. That's pretty much all we can do, unless we pick up another defenseman in this deal, which I don't really see the point of doing. And I'll probably just keep Dolan in his role, since he is getting special teams time. I don't think I need to bump him up in his role or anything like that. I mean, he's... His morale is not going to be the best, but I don't really care about that. I just care about his natural growth. It's his first year. He never, you know, he since I've adjusted him, he's he never really grows his first year, but he will grow like second, third, fourth year a lot. And he'll jump up to 90. So, yeah. All right. So, let's check that out. Let's see what we'd have to give up for to get Taylor Hall here. So, Clef Bomb, I think, is... Is on the block, and uh, you know, point was made that it's not just him underperforming; it's the entire team. And you know, I agree with you to an extent, but at the same time, on that first pairing with the points that McDavid and Drysaddle are putting up, I mean, what McDavid at fifty something? Yeah, McDavid fifty four, Drysaddle uh, forty, no fifty one. Uh, Clefbaum being at less than thirty at this point in the season is. That, that's more than underperforming. That's just... He's just playing a simple knock and the job done. I don't know. And... Yeah, I just... I don't know. He should... Like, his assist numbers, especially. He should be getting a lot more assists. Even last year, when he did slightly better. Like, with his... I don't know. Something... I don't know. I feel like Dolan's gonna replace him and be better. And we can maybe even keep around Nurse, see if he'll become more of a solid top four guy than Clefbaum kind of will, or who knows. But let's let's add Clefbaum in. He's on that. I, I, it sucks because he's on that great contract. But if he's not, if he doesn't perform how I need him to, then you know the contract is only worth so much at that at that point. So we're gonna have to give these guys quite a bit, and I might not even be able to make the trade go through right now. But I'm going to try. So we have to make it really worth their while to get Taylor Hall back. We'll see what they say to this. They're not going to... Uh, value just isn't where it needs to... Unless, at least they're not saying, like, I'm, I'm stupid. Sometimes they do that. They're like, hey, he must be crazy to think this will work. All right, well, we're giving them one thing that they do want. Okay, what else can we maybe afford to give up here? You know, we can give him a winger. We can give him to Loosty, you know. 
when you're thinking about selling Toulouse anyway, kind of give them a winger to replace what they're losing. Because, man, they're, they're taking a pretty hefty shot right here. I mean, they still got, they got some other young guys coming up. I mean, they're all right. They don't even, they don't really need Toulouse to. They have actually have a pretty good left wing core right now. Minus Hall. All right, well, what else, what else? I don't, I know, I know people are suggesting giving up a pick. I don't want to give up the firsts. I want to try to hold on to the first for sure. So seconds is what I looked to. Let's throw in Washington second. See how close this gets us. Um, woefully insufficient. Okay, well, that still makes it pretty tough. We might not be able to make this trade go through right now. And the thing about it, we don't need to make it go through right now. There's still an extra year on that deal. But it would be it would be great to make this trade go through now. It one less thing to worry about, and we wouldn't have to trip on it. So we might have to give up our own second, which again, I'm kind of willing to do. Done all right, not sufficient. Well, at least they're not saying woefully insufficient. So we are we are making making progress here. We do have two thirds, right? Yeah, we can throw in our own third. We can still hold on to Washington's two things. Use those to move up if we really really need to. If there's nothing good in the second, third, which there probably won't be. So all right, Clef bomb Roberts the second and a third. How close are we to that? Still not sufficient. It might have to be the first. I don't want it to be the first, but it, it just might have to be. Special, or we can just wait. <laughs> we can still wait. I kind of still want to hold on to Skinner. Even though they want Skinner, but I do want to hold on to him. We don't have any other goaltender prospect, so I kind of want to hold on to him. I'm trying to think what we can afford, to, what else we can afford to give up here, and it's actually not that much. Much. Talusti is really it, but even so, if I even if I threw in Talusti, yeah, they have too many skaters, so I actually couldn't do that because I have to take someone back. Oh man, it might have to be the first. If I if I do that, if I have to throw in this first, which sucks, but for Taylor Hall, you you could definitely say it's worth it. I mean, we don't have to worry about that left winger pretty much, the first liner for ever. Okay, well, I'm not going to throw in any other pick if I'm throwing in this first. Still not sufficient. That's kind of crazy. Even if I threw in the second, what will I say to that? If I'm giving up first and second, which is a lot, but it's kind of worth it. What the hell? Well, if, they, if they're still kind of... Yeah, man, I don't know. The value just isn't sufficient at all. Even if I threw in that third, I don't even think it's close enough. I could throw in multiple seconds, but... Too far off. Even multiple seconds, this doesn't go through with the way it's looking. So that's a lot to give up, and it still won't go through. Okay, well now it's saying just a bit low. Well, this is what it'll tech it'll cost. Man, <laughs> it's so close, but I don't know how to make this go through. We can't add in like one more little thing. We have to remove something. Unless we could take back something that they want to give up and help out with the block thing. And then throw in something with a bit higher value. We can pick up them. No. Hold on. Oh, no, no. That won't make sense. I got confused right there. I was like, I could put him in and put in Toulouse, but that's a the wrong way i'm thinking about getting extra value while matching blocks but that's no no this is gonna work i could take back one of these dudes with like one year left this guy with a year left but i don't know how much that helps our cause like i don't think that sometimes putting it putting another block will help but no it's not in this case so we have to give through give up a bit extra and the second is kind of the most value that we have that that second is more than Toulouse, I think. Well, we could throw a Hamannick in. <laughs> but we are, at that point, we're giving up two defensemen. Yeah, it's it's actually the same as, like, Hamannick's or Toulouse's value. Yeah, it's closer to Hamannick's value. Or, I don't know, it's... And if we did throw Hamannick in there, we'd have to give... Uh, this is tough. 
It's so close, but I do feel like I'm giving up a lot for that. Like, a lot, dude. A first and then another second plus something else. Could be something from next year. Could I don't want to give the first from next year, that's for sure. I don't even want to give it the first from this year, man. I'm really torn on that. But people did give the go-ahead to give up the first. So... We need something with a bit of extra value, but these two picks are the same. It would have to be a first if I wanted to do that. It could be maybe a first from years from now. Something that we don't need. Like 2024, we're like, hey, we're going to be a good team by now. We could do something like that. And that should go through. That's still quite a lot for freaking Taylor Hall. But he is a 91, right in his prime. And he looks like he'll produce really well with McDavid. He's got great stats all the way around. Takes a good chunk of shots. So 30 goal man already. With McDavid, you never know what the hell they could do together. So, all right. Will this go through? Probably. So, in that case, I'm going to try to get back some extra stuff. I'm not going to be able to get back all that. But since I've given up that first, I'm trying to get as much back as possible. Although, from this year, maybe I don't want those late picks from this year. But we could use those to move up. But mm, do they want to get their picks from next year? Because next year, yeah, computer generation from next year is way better. So let's take those back. If we're giving up all this, two firsts, one from way in the future, sure, and a second, plus a prospect. This is so much. Plus Clef Bomb. Like, this is a lot to give up for Taylor Hall. But since they don't want to give him up, it is something that if, yeah. All right, let's see what they say to that. Just a bit low. Okay. So this will go through. And this pick is kind of free value because by the by the time we get to there, we should be amazing. So I'm not too worried about that first. We could always pick up firsts later on for them. The, the suckiest part is giving up this first, this Nashville first. That that hurts. And this second, to be to be honest. But what else can you do? Um, this. This should go through. Yeah. All right. So we got a 5, 6, and a 7 for next year. A lot of later picks for next year. We could try to pick up some late round elites. We made the trade go through by popular demand. Clef Bomb is gone. Taylor Hall is back on the Oilers where he should have stayed. Should have. I wish I could have put Larson in that deal instead, but just for, just for the memes. But all right. Okay. Now then, I'm gonna put Taylor Hall in there. It's gonna put him in some weird. Oh no, because Ty Ratty wasn't on anything. Okay, now we're gonna make some adjustments here. All right. Let me just. Uh, I might. You know what? I might. I might edit some some of this out. All right, so I got these lines sorted out now. Here's what the new and improved Oilers look like. Hall, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Talusti, Nuge, Neal. Yeah, and then our bottom six is exactly the same. Defensively, uh, it's a pretty weak. Lur Nurse, Larson, I'm putting Bear into the top four because I, I want to keep Dolan in his role. He is still getting special teams time, so that's all right. So our top four is weak sauce, but whatever. Uh, power play, that's what that looks like. Dolan on the top unit with uh, Larson. Nurse on the second unit with Kajula on the point. Uh, four man. Oops, I didn't actually change that, so. Whatever. I did the four on fours, but not that one. Not that this really matters for the end here, but might as well. All right, we'll keep that. Whatever. Penalty kills the same. Extras. Yeah. Oh, wait. What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, I forgot. It actually switched it. My bad. Because I did, it did one of because <laughs> when I was trying to switch something, it said, oh, you'll lose your changes. And then I forgot to go back and do them. So good, good for me. Can you take face-offs? No. Can Neil take face-offs? Probably not. <laughs> do I care? No. <laughs> He's horrible. It's all right. Toulouse is slightly better. Okay. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> I think Pooley RV. Here we go. Okay. Now we're good. My bad. All right. There we go. Oh, you know what? I might even want Puliyarvi on here besides instead of Kajula. You know, I'm going to do that too on the on there. I'm going to switch it all up. So what was the point of even editing? There we go. Now it's done. And then I also made a minor change onto... Uh, I got Wallstrom still on the top, you know, but I've moved him on to the second line now in the AHL. So, all right. 
we'll see. And I didn't move back down Ratty because, well, he'll he's waiver eligible. And I don't really want to lose him, even though I might lose the guy anyway. Still. So we're going to just keep him here as depth. And I think we're ready to keep going. Actually, we might want to sell a couple more pieces here. I'm going to see what else I could possibly sell here to get to get some picks back or something. Just, just to kind of do that. And, for, yeah, especially if we can get some picks for this year. We can't really combine anything to move up anymore into the first round. So this pick is all we have in the first round. So we're going to have to make it a, something good. Something that we could use. All right, what else? What else? I could still... I don't really want to move to Lusty. I mean, I could. You know what? I guess he's got one year left. I could move him. Or I could keep him on the second line. But when I'm thinking about it, we don't need anyone to grow on the second line. So the second line can do poorly if it wants to. So I could move to Lusty. And then use Ratty in there anyway. Alright, let's see about that. Who wants to Lusty? A bunch of teams want him. Minnesota wants him. Kings want him. Could I get a nice second or something for him? Maybe? Oh, they'd be over cap. Whatever. I can, I can fix that. <laughs> I can actually retain... Get out. All right, let's try to retain on that. We could throw Tyratty in there. I don't think that'll matter too much. Um, they'd still be over the cap, really. Damn. Well, that that's rough. That was, like, the best pick, too. Yeah, never mind. Maybe. Maybe this will... They don't want to give it up. Sucks. That really... Yeah, it's unfortunate. Those guys are all good. We need to find a team who wants... Oh, there we go. And they don't have their second. They have one for next year. I'd rather get one for this year. Just in case I want to package a couple seconds and a third together. For something in that late first round. Like if we see something that we really want. I don't think Buffalo will go for this. No way. Because it's not on the block. Yeah. If it was on the block, maybe. That was our only chance. Boston's poor. I don't know how, but they're bad. Uh, this might go through. Not quite. Damn. Okay. So it'll have to be, it'll have to be a team who's actually doing okay then. But maybe borderline. Which was... The best one was a team that doesn't want or have much room. Yeah, that's rough. Okay, well maybe Nashville. Although I think... No, they do have their second still. We could do their second. Maybe in the third doing that deal? No way. I'll try it anyway. Oh, it's, our, it's New Jersey's third. That's right. Okay, well... We should be able to get that second for Toulouse. Worth retention, and I think we can get more. Let's grab a couple late ones for this year, just because we have a lot for next year. Okay, maybe not. Okay, maybe not at all. Really? Not even for the second? Really? With retention? Too far off. That's That kind of throws me off. Okay, maybe I might have to be a good team then. <laughs> maybe Dallas or something like that. We'll grab their second. Maybe even a third. Probably not, but I'm trying everything. Yeah, no way. But we should be able to get that second. I'm being a little anal right here and trying to get as much back as possible, but we did just give up a lot. So, yeah, a 2 and a 4 right there for Toulouse is not bad at all. So, yeah. Now we're going to just put in Tyratty there because, again, we don't really need that second line to do incredible. Yeah, you know, it would be nice for the Nuge to do okay, but he's he's I don't think he's going to grow much more, and if he does grow, it's going to be stat growth. So, that's kind of where I'm at in that regard. Let's throw Tyratty in in all lines there. I'm still going to keep Pugliarvi in his role, but I do I have him on the point on the power play. Maybe even put him on the wing now. Yeah, well, he moves the puck around well. Tyratty's got a hard shot. Pugliarvi, not as hard. I don't know. Whatever, let's do something like that. I'd rather have him on the wing. Okay, now I think think that's it i don't i don't need to trade hamannick yet we could wait more and more year for that and i'm kind of short on defensemen so i think i think we're done with selling i think that was the one piece uh, other piece that we could sell we got a couple picks backs for it and he, he was for free anyway so yeah all right that's it we got a depth forward and a depth defenseman for the end of the year and that's all we need. So that concludes our business on the trade deadline. Quite busy it was. Trading for Taylor Hall. Not easy, but we got it done. He's now leading our team in points. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm really excited to see how him and McDavid are going to do. I really am. I think I think they could do really well. We'll see, though. All right, let's end in the season. I don't know why I just clicked on that. Just because my mind wanted to see him together again. The way it should have been. But whatever. 
Okay, let's finish off the year here and watch our team go back to 500 and win every single game and ruin our own pick. Which might happen. I don't think so. Not with our second line. <laughs> if As long as we score some goals here. There we go. Three goals, four, and a loss. I'll take it. That's what we want. We want to score goals and take L's. All right. Let's check out Sweden. Uh... Oh, he's available. That was that yeah, that was that center guy. All right, another loss, but with three goals, four. That's what I'm talking about. Fully healed. This guy gets to go back in somewhere. Probably right here. Yeah, just get the good guys in there. Plus, he's got some growth to him left. I don't know. His stats aren't amazing, but we'll see what he ends up. Let's give him third line time. Not second though. Eh, he's got better offensive stats, kind of. Screw it. Let's put him with Wallstrom, then. And maybe switch Samuel Simmons, dude. Oh, what the hell? He's got 80 face-offs? That's kind of crazy. Looking at their offensive stats to see who's slightly better. I think Samuelson's slightly better. So we'll get him there. Just trying to help out Wallstrom as much as possible. That's the goal here in the AHL. Grow Wallstrom. All right. Keep it up here. A win right there. Three goals. We got a lot of three goal games here. Well, I say that and then we come back. But then I think I think our scoring is definitely improved. It's it's hard to tell, especially with the second line being what it is. But yeah, I don't even know. It's actually just hard to tell. We'll see with uh, with our team stats when we check them at the end of the year. That will kind of give us a good idea. I think it was at, it went back to like 2.4, I think it was, or maybe it was lower than that, I don't know. Let's do two weeks for defense there. Alright, tough shutout from the Sharks. And another L from the Devs. And, okay, yeah, a few games in a row with two goals for us, so we still probably need to op optimize our third and second line better and maybe a bunch of other stuff better, but whatever. Zach Cassin's been injured with a sore shoulder, suck it up, get Della Rose in there. Oh my god. Well, whatever. At least we didn't like win a bunch of games. I wasn't I wouldn't have been a fan of that, but I was expecting maybe a bit more scoring. But we did okay. So there it is. End of the season. Bakersfield made the playoffs. We did not. Typical. We don't weren't really expecting to, especially after the start we got off to and not being able to find So Taylor Hall what he came here 58 points and Right? 58, right? Yeah, 58, and then... So we got, what, 16 points in the stretch of 20 games played or so? Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty solid. So I would like to see what a full year of him. So I think our goals for kind of stuck the same. Goals against, we don't talk about that. Power play actually sort of got worse by the looks of it. Home record was abysmal. Our away record is in the plus, but wow, we disappointed our fans completely okay so mcdavid 72 points hall at 74 dry side was 70 so you know what that's actually pretty damn good nuge oh my god nuge had 62 and neil had 61 oh, that's way above what i thought they would get so you know what we're looking good oh and right at the end jesse pulley becomes listed as second line <laughs> well sorry no more games bud he might have become listed in there at some point. I could have moved them up, but hey. Very interesting. All right, well, at least he'll be second line for next year, guaranteed, and he should get another jump in this offseason here. I'm definitely not going to trade him. Okay. Dolan led our team defense in points with 18. <laughs> six, of them, six of those points were on the power play. Four goals, too. Impressive. All right. Um, terrible. Goaltenders were terrible. Didn't expect them to be good. And we had a rookie, Dolan. No way he's going anywhere near the Calder. Because he's on a tra crappy team. But I, I'm i impressed, sort of, with our production. I do like I do like what, what this looks like. If we have Dreisaitl on this line. Imagine a full year with this kind of production. Playmaker, hybrid. Well, they're both kind of hybrid, him and Hall. But I guarantee you, McDavid moves more towards hybrid. And Hall will move more towards goal scoring. 276 shots. 272 yeah mcdavid started taking less shots i think so this is gonna be yeah this will this should be really good next year full year of these guys yeah 
And then we could have Nuge, Pooley, Arvey, Neal on our second line, and that should be pretty damn good as well. Yeah, I'd say next year, I, I next year our goal should be to try to make the postseason. I think we have a decent shot of it. We could pick up, you know, a defenseman and free agency, I think. I think there should be something available. Maybe not a top top guy. Don't worry about Larson. He's demoralized. That's it. Oh, my God. TV. <laughs> Minus 39. Ooh, that's hilarious. Kinda. All right. Anyway, let's uh let's take a look at the league here and see. So I think since we picked up Hall from another team, we won't exactly count him because you couldn't make the fucking prediction that he'd been on the team. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Uh, it'll be the next highest guy, which was McDavid on our team. So don't don't trip on that. <laughs> That'd be fucked up if I'm like, nope, Taylor Hall. Everyone loses. All right. So Sagan. League lead in points for fourth with 103. Jamie Ben with 101. Dallas Stars had themselves a year. 59 goals for Sagan. 56 for Ovi. So he just misses out on that. Who let in the assists? Raj. Oh my goodness. Yep. That first line though. Ben, Rajaloff, and Sagan. Filthy. All of them with 90 plus points. And they're plus minus. Probably out of this world. Craziness. All right. So power play goal leader. Uh, Tavares was 16, 25 points, uh, 28 points tied for the lead of the uh, power play points between Kane and Heischer. McDavid right below with 27. So there we go. He's, uh, he's doing his job. He's getting there. Yeah. Next year he should, I should, he should at least be point a game. I think I don't, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be point a game next year. All right. Who's the most clutch? Ovi with 11. Toffoli with 10. He didn't have too many goals, I don't think, either. No, 30 goals. One out of three of his goals was a game winner. Most impressive. Oh, my God. Look at the shot total from Ovi. 374. No one's even close. But shot percentage-wise, Sagan with that 20.6%. That's really high. Very high. Okay. Takeaways here. Bergeron with 152, and he's looking like the shoe in for the Selkie again. He's got the hits. He probably has a well. He's on the Bruins, so it's plus minus not to be that. Yeah, it's all right. So he's probably still in the Selkie. I don't see any other center up there. Koivu is the next closest, but he's not even close. Faceoff percentage is even better for Bergeron. All right, so there's that defenseman Klingberg. I don't think I've anyone guessed him. So Klingberg comes out and capitalizes on Dallas's insanely good year with an 86 point season. Looks like the sure shoe in for the Norris. The big ass plus minus. Let's see his defensive stats because the game loves those defensive stats too. Uh, not as many hits. The ratio wasn't that great either. But had a decent chunk of block shots. But I, I still think because it's plus minus and his points that he's he's going to win the Norris. Klingberg, breaking everyone's hearts. Let's see here. All right, so for the best goalie, Vasilevsky. Holy crap, by a long shot. I know some people guessed him. So we might have a lot of two or more uh, winners here for this one. I don't know if we'll get a clean sweep, but my goodness, Vasilevsky. Is there even is there even competition? There's no there's no even top Vesna candidates. There's just Vasilevsky. <laughs> just give him it. Give him it right now. Holy crap. <laughs> that is insane. Alright, and we'll check out the rookies. Uh Elias Peterson is 65 point season. And the top two rookies were on the Canucks, so they are on their way up. Wow. Yep. I'd say Elias Peterson's winning that Norris. They're both minus three, too. That's pretty crazy. I don't think any rookie goalie is in here doing better than them. No, not even close. Not even have enough games played. Those stats aren't bad from Lukanen. Very good stats from Lukanen, but only played one game, so. <laughs> okay, now we'll check out the fun stuff. Who let in hits and fights here? Uh, Bo Horvat, 221 hits. Calm the hell down. My goodness. That's a lot of hits. And fights. Uh, Dodgin, the man. 24, Borwick with 18. Ryan Reeves with 15. Kyle Clifford with 13. And that's a lot of fights. And those will start disappearing once uh, those guys get replaced on their respective teams. <laughs> Why the hell? He's 73. He must be demoralized. 
But yeah, he's got to be demoralized. There's no way he's that low. Suns must have had a crap year. Huh, what a surprise. All right, well, there you have that. I should actually, you know what, I should check out our player stats for our AHL. Just because, well, just Wallstrom. <laughs> just Wallstrom mainly. 41 points, 24 goals. So I like that. You got goals. 272 shots. I love it. And remember, he was playing a lot on the third line. Oh, yeah. So imagine this guy. He doesn't like people. Get me. He's like, get me the fuck off this team. <laughs> get me into the get me into the show already. You gotta you gotta bide your time there, Wallstrom. Calm down. Probably because oh, I know why. Because this team's like full of right wingers. That's probably why. Like half most of our centers are right wingers. <laughs> anyway, that's still a decent. Let's see how he did on the power play. Yeah, seven power play goals with eleven points. Yep, pretty damn good. And remember, this is as a you know a '60s guy. So just uh. Just watch for him to improve as he, as he gets his overall better, moves up the lineup in the AHL, and I cannot wait till he cracks the NHL. Alrighty, let's check out the progress reports, and then we'll probably check out the draft class one more time. Pooley Arby got a lot of stat, a lot of girl, well, a lot spread out. Oh, there we go. Skating got better. Defense didn't get any better. Shot got better. Offensive awareness went up by one. Passing went up by one along with his other stats. Yeah, he's he's growing well. I think he'll get another nice boost here in the offseason. He'll be he'll be a solid second liner next year. And that's great for us because that's what we need. Other than that, I think everything's statistical or morale. Oh, no. Two natural growth from uh, Dreisaitl. So there we go. And the Nuge, probably, yeah, that's stat growth. Yep, all right. So that's that. Let's check in the system. Wallstrom went from 62 to 68 or, or 69 this year. Nice. Um, passing's up to a 79. Awareness is up to a 78. That's great. Discipline went up a bit. Uh, shooting category looking good, especially for his overall. That should be great by the time he hits defense. Getting okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. Pretty evenly spread across. Skating should get better. Doing all right. Not much physical category, but it's needed. All right. I like it. Who else? Who else screwed? McLeod went up to a 60 overall. Not bad. He's. I don't think he's going to be 70 by 20, but he, he could still crack the rocker. Maybe crack. What did I say? Crack the rocker? Crack the roster and maybe be a, you know, third liner in the future, which drafting him as what a late first rounder. It's not, you know, obviously you wanted to get up to second line, but you know, with that, with the overall that he was at. We'll see. I mean, it could still happen. Could be a late bloomer. Nima Linen grew a bit. So he's close enough to uh, 70 by 20. Caleb Jones, unfortunately, is 21. Skinner grew more, though, so that's good. Should get another boost in the offseason. Still a couple years out from this guy hitting in our eight NHL team. Other than that, though, I like it. All the way around, some decent growth. The the one that we wanted to jump out did jump out. <laughs> He got six or seven overall growth. Should get a jump, a bump up in the offseason too. So, Wallstrom is on his way up. Maybe two years until he's in like in the top six. Eh, no, I'd say two years till he's in the NHL. Maybe three till he's in the uh, top six. We'll see. All right. Um, yeah, draft class then, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap things up here. All right. Let's kind of see what the projections are if they've changed much so two way forward snipers i don't know what kind of we're gonna have a decent pick but i don't think we're gonna win the lottery if we do obviously we're gonna pick up this delmore dude because he's looking like the pretty much the uh, guaranteed first overall might actually look into a mm, never mind there's not really a good one let's think about like a center playmaker but this guy's only top six i'd rather get like an elite and have maybe a lower one sure but at least be able to work them up anything that we've gotten in the later rounds any any gems yet well guaranteed late elite snipe well late first sniper not super super late this guy i don't know hard to say he could be a top nine or he could be an elite we'd have to check him out more he's in the dub yeah, we didn't, not really much, 
not really much hope in that regard. Yeah, there's this guy, late first round, but that would be more of the Nashville pick that we had. I really wish that there was, you know, a good defensive defenseman in, like, the top or a two-way defenseman because we got Dahlin, you know. That would have been good to pick up, but there isn't. So, whatever. We know this guy's a green top six. So, yeah. Uh, our pick, unless it's, like, in the top three, is not going to be very good. I'm just going to call that right now, unless we can get this Gilroy dude scouted as an elite, but not looking like it. I might pin him and go back to the WHL, which seems like kind of a good idea. If this, guy, if this guy's WHL, yeah, okay, you know what, let's let's do that. I want to get this these guys scouted. And what was that other dude, that, the first round guy? I want to probably do him as well. With, uh, wait. Or no, 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 it was a fourth round guy. That's right, fourth round guy. He was in the WHL though. So I want, I want to get it. Just in case that guy's like, you know, a fourth round elite or something like that. I definitely would want to pick him up, you know. So there he is. Maltby, that's him. Pin him as well. And anything else? No, we don't need him. We know what he is. No, it's a Q. Alright, so probably pin these guys, go back to the WHL, try to get him as, as much scout as possible. This guy could be an elite, you know what I mean? Like, he's most likely going to be a top 9, but if he's a top 6 or an elite, you know, maybe worth it. Well, well it will be worth it, even if it's a red, he'll more value. But yeah, other than that, we didn't get any, any crazy, uh, any gems scouted or anything like that, which is a bit unfortunate, but I'm not too upset about it. And I didn't see any good goalie prospects when I looked. I might check that right now. Sort by potentials. Yeah, well, this guy can only be a starter. These, All these guys have could be elites, but there's no guarantee. So we can, you know, pick, pick some goalies and hope for the best. If we want to with some of the late round picks, but we don't have anything guaranteed. And they're all from, like, freaking different leagues. So scouting them would take a long, long time to try to... See what they become, and odds are they're not anything that great. So, all right, we'll keep these three guys uh, pinned. I will take care of getting them, uh, getting them scouted out as best I can uh, before the draft. And uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Actually, let's check to see if I want to extend anyone or if I need to extend anyone, which I'm very well might want to do. Okay, so yeah, I probably want to extend Puliyarvi, Tyratty. I could extend if I. Mm, but really, mostly, mostly Pooley Arby. So I might as well offer him that now. Let's see. That should be like a mill off, right? Yeah, I'm trying to do rough math in my head. Should be a little bit under four for 15%. Let me see. Because each one, no, 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 wait. Each one's 150, and that's five of them. No, it's a little bit. I'm kind of ballparking it here because I don't I don't have my phone with me, so that's I mean yeah, he's a second liner now. That's still kind of a lot. I kinda of almost want to wait. Because he shouldn't he shouldn't reject any his price might actually go down. It's still a decent price, but his price might go down. I don't know if it will though. If it does, it does, but you know what? It might be he's not gonna he's not gonna deny us. Uh you know, because he's still coming off his entry level. He will not deny us. So I don't have to sign him right now. Yeah, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait to see if that if that deal gets better. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'd rather just wait on that. Just in case. Yeah, might as well. Because if when you're coming off your entry level, they won't they won't really browbeat you or anything like that. So a chance for a better deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that. Because that's kind of that's kind of high for what he is right now, especially. So we'll see what that is. Anyway, so this is going to do it. Uh, let me know what you think about that trade. Going into the draft, we should uh, have a pretty decent pick. We only have one first this time, but maybe that's all we'll need. So uh, any sort of players we should look out for with that. I mean, if we could win the lottery again, that'd be insane. We can get that Delmore dude, and that'd be awesome. 
I'm not going to hold my breath for that, though. But Taylor Hall back on the Oilers. I think he, McDavid, and Drysaddle should have an outstanding year next year. I think I think they're really going to come alive. And our second line should be better with Pooley Arby jumping up, too. So I'm excited about the future defense. Bit of an issue. We could look to free agency, but we definitely should look to drafting some guys as well. Unfortunately, there's no top defenseman in this draft besides offensive defenseman, which we may, we may not really need. Yeah, it's. I don't really think we need it unless they cap out around you know that top four. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what's available and see what we want. All right. So uh, yeah, that'll do it. Let me know what you guys think. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you. Be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow, and you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.